In this episode, we're going to do several things. First of all, I'm going to bring you up to date on how my account, my main account, did in uh, the previous season. Then we're going to take some of that uh, juicy glint uh, and spend it and improve my deck uh, from play rewards, basically. Uh, we're going to uh, open some Gladius cases. Uh, we're going to open up some draws. And I've got a special surprise planned. So if you like pack openings, please stay tuned. Hey, all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I do appreciate your time. And if you continue to like uh, this type of coverage of Splinterlands from me, please uh, leave a like on the video and pass it around to other friends you may know who like Splinterlands topics. Um, and also think about subscribing. If you're not subscribed already, why aren't you? It does help me out. I appreciate it. Uh, if you would like to support the channel, we do have the super thanks bo button at the bottom. And as always, uh, that keeps the lights on, so to speak. I appreciate it. Okay, with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, it's been a few days since the end of season, but I haven't uh, made this video. I had several other things going on. So what I wanted to do is obviously I want to every season try and uh, strengthen my deck. And um, the one thing I did this week was I maxed out my Kulu Mastermind, uh, which uh, previously is from the last reward set, um, but I was uh, a little bit shy of, I think I only had it at like second level, maybe third level. Uh, but anyway, we went ahead and maxed that out. Let's go ahead. And... No, I was looking at these. These are the cards we will be looking at. Okay, so there we go. Max level Kulu Mastermind. Um, interesting one. Uh, one of the stronger cards in the set, I believe. Okay, with that said, um, that's the one really purchase I made uh, to improve my deck this week. Um, what we're going to do today is, if you're not familiar with Splinterlands, uh, one of the things you earn while playing the game is uh, called Glint. And you can collect that Glint until you have a certain amount, and you can spend it on various things in the shop. We'll go ahead and go into the shop here. Um, and you can buy cards, you can buy loot chests, you can buy titles, and uh, a few other resources that are used in the game. So that's just a, an aside for those people who are not um, new to the game, okay? So uh, with that said, uh, I, I just kinda want to do a sidestep here. Uh, I was pinged by Royal Eagle uh, the other day in Discord. And he asked me an interesting question. Uh, he said, do you know all the people that signed up uh, for Splinterlands from your referral code? And I said, no, frankly, I've been putting my referral code out on Splinterlands videos for years now. Um, and I don't really necessarily pay attention to who uses it. It's not something I go in and check uh, very often. So I went in and checked it. And it turned out that uh, he had contacted me because in the last month, my referral code was used to enter Splinterlands uh, by more accounts than anybody else's referral code. His question was, he was trying to find out if I could find out from those people why uh, there wasn't a high conversion rate. As we know, um, one of the problems we're facing in the game and that the team is trying to overcome is the low conversion rate. And that's a rate of people that actually go to the website check out the the game for a little while but don't end up buying a spell book or continue to play okay i said sorry i can't um, but i said i would mention it in the video um we had a lot of people uh use my code in august so if you're one of those new people that were checking out the game uh from my referral code let me know i mean you can shoot me a, a private discord chat or you can leave it in this um leave it in the comments section of this video and I'll relay it because one of the things that this team, uh, I found that this team is pretty good at is taking feedback. And in fact, Royal Eagle, who is their um, moderator on Discord has done a great job in my opinion um, of keeping up with people in Discord, answering questions and basically being a PR man uh, for Splinterlands. So uh, any, any feedback I get from this question, if you are a new user that used my code in August and you decided not to continue playing the game or not to buy the $10 um, uh, spell book to go ahead and play the game, let me know and I'll pass that on. So um, 
it's just all in the goal. The goal is to improve the game. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump in and uh, buy some stuff. Um, so I have, first of all, I wanted to show you where I ended up uh, last season. So there's my end of season. Uh, I ended up champ three as usual, 3,860. And I earned 137,874 glint. Not shabby. Um, but with that said, I have, and I'm sneaking up on 100,000 uh, SPS staked, and I also have 50,000 delegated to me. So this is almost, uh, if you're considering, well, what does it take to make that much glint? Um, well, I have a fairly decent card collection, um, nowhere near the top guys or anything, but it's, it's decent. I would say it's, it's gold level, low champ level kind of deck. Um, and we're looking at rewards for somebody who has a hundred and about 50,000 stake because between what I have and what's been uh, delegated to me, um, that's where I am. So I just wanted to kind of give you a frame of reference. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. And the first thing I always do is buy some merits. Now the last few times I've bought two levels of merits, but this thing, this time, I think I'm gonna buy three levels because these uh, uh, packs uh, have a high um, value, um, a high perceived value to me because the cards are strong. It's taken forever to level these cards up. So I would like to just finally start getting some a max level of these cards. So let's go ahead and that's one set. And as you know, as you buy these levels uh, or batches, uh, the price does go up. Back to the shop. Let's buy another set. So the first one was 2,000. Each one of these um, batches will get me one pack or one case, as it were. 2,000. And then it jumps up to 4,500. And I think that's where we'll cut it off. So that's enough for three packs. I'm not going to buy any chests. I'm just going to be going with draws. Uh, if you do go with chests, you do have... Um, uh, the high probability of getting a bunch of merits in your chest. So if you're going to go in the glint shop, I would buy your chests and open them up first if you're buying chests before you buy the merits. But I think the merits, at least the first two levels, are always worth um, the glint um, due to the high value of the cards, uh, play value, that is. Okay, so let's go in, and I think I'm going to, once again, uh, as in last episode, I said that I'm focusing in on the epic draws. Uh, due to the cards available, uh, a couple of the uh, really powerful. In fact, my argument would be, I think that the epics in this set are more powerful than the legendary. Let me know if I'm uh, full of hot air in the comments and uh, back up what you're saying. So let's go ahead and jump in. If I did 10, it would be 75,000. If I did 15, let's do 15. Why not? Yeah, let's go ahead and use alchemy potions. See what I got. Okay. Gold foil Olivia of the Brook. Yeah, baby. Look at that. Four gold foils. Hey, gathering, check it out. Three gold foils Arachne Weavers. Ha! I said it right that time. Um, and a regular foil. Two regular foils. Uh, I just said that because both uh, he and I uh, mispronounced this uh, arcane. Uh, I've been guilty of doing that several times, but I said it right this time. Um, but check that out. A gold foil Olivia of the Brook and three gold foil uh, Arachne Weavers. I had to think about it there. And a regular foil Olivia over here. Olivia is one of my more, I think probably my most favorite of, of this set due to the complete weirdness and oddity of how it works. Uh, I love it. Okay, so we got that. Uh, let's go ahead in and we got to do at least one rare draw. Where am I standing now? Uh, I got two, a little bit over 200,000 or legendary. I mean, we got to do at least one legendary. Um, let's do two legendaries. Of course, use the potion. All right. 
See with that gold border around there, I have to look really closely to see if this is actually gold foil. It's not though, the, the, the slight border here would indicate it. So either way, uh, finally got a surly drunk. I had been missing that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in on common draws. And I have 139,000. Let's jump in and do some common draws. I want to get these commons maxed out so I can just uh, be done with them. No, we're not using potions on commons. I feel like that would be a waste. Okay, this is just going to be an assortment of commons, obviously. I'm still working through most of the commons. I think I have level 5-ish at this point. There's the gold foil. Wow, three Tokatag conscripts in a row. Three giant alpine skinks in a row. What's up with that? A gold foil, two gold foils, three gold foils. Can I get another one? Four gold foils, five gold foils. Oh, I forgot I did all 400. I'm like, man, this is going six gold foils. Do I hear seven? This takes a long time when 400 goes through. Seven. Do I hear eight? Do I hear eight gold foils down in front? I don't know. What's 2% of, uh, I guess, 400? Uh, there's 8. Nine. <clears throat> so we're over, um, we're more than the, uh, the drop average of gold, uh, gold foil on the common. So Anything from here is just Lang Yap. Okay, so nine gold foils, commons. You can close anytime now. I oftentimes get a bunch of lag on that page for some reason. Okay, so let's finish up with some rares. 79,000 left. What's 50 run me here? Let's do 50 rares. Yeah, go ahead and do gold, uh, do potions on those. I'm just not using potions on commons. There's a gold foil. Two. Okay, two gold foils out, not bad. Okay, so let's go ahead and go over to the, sh the guild area. I have enough for seven Gladius cases. And I have a few extra um, merits that I can buy the gems with. Bloodstones, is that what it's called? Okay, I should know this by now. Yeah, bloodstones. So I can get uh, 22. Yep. That'll help out. Oh, I used merits. Oh, yeah, that's what I was supposed to do. <laughs> I thought for a minute there I used credits. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and go to open. Should be fine. Okay, I got seven of these. Let's go ahead and open them all. Cross my fingers. Let's get some legendaries, boys. 
see what we got here. Eh, got a Captain Katie. Nothing much else. I mean, one Katroba Gobson, one Edith. Everything else is kind of meh. Okay. Let's close that off. Let's go ahead and go over the cards. And since we were just doing that, let's clear this and go to Gladiator cards. And uh, once again, uh, I know I've uh, some people have told me in the comments that you should be really careful about doing this uh, mass select combine all cards, and I agree. You have to use your filters before you use this mass combine. Make sure you have everything filtered down, the cards filtered down, uh, to exactly what you want to mass combine. Like me, before I, I found, uh, uh, I think KGM Jam uh, told, uh, did a video and I saw him use this uh, and I had never seen it. Uh, everybody said that it's been in the game for quite a while, but I guess I just overlooked it. Either way, you can see that I just have these um, Gladius cards selected. So let's do a mass combine. I don't think I'm going to be able to, is that gonna level up? Nope. I don't think I'm going to have any levels here. Yeah, uh, Alva will level. However, I hardly ever use her. Okay, let's just combine. Love this. Beforehand, uh, whenever I do these videos, I'd have to stop the video and it would just like take me a half hour to combine all these cards. Okay, we got everything leveled up now. Uh, you can kind of see where I sit. Let's look at commons. Let's see. Uh, out of the commons, I would definitely say Katrubba is the one I use the most. In uh, once in a while, I will use Bertrall in low mana matches, and once in a while, I will leave, use uh, Whistling Damon once in a while in low mana matches. Now, as far as rares go, you can see that I've been collecting these cards ever since they started, and um, level four mostly, you can see. Out of this batch, I do use uh, Relinor Cleaver quite a lot. Captain Katie's a favorite amongst like almost everybody, and I do like Ajax Lightfoot as well. Once in a while, Lisa Fox if I'm using uh, Death. Epics. Of course, the all-around favorite, Quora. Uh, I use Marisol once in a while in high mana matches. Uh, those are the two I probably use the most. And as far as legendary goes, don't have a whole lot of these. Uh, very rare. Um, hmm. I got this last week. I'm trying to find a good fit for this one. Um, I use Fina once in a while. Um, and I use Genie Guys once in a while. Sola, I've been trying to fit her in, and she's great in uh, lower mana matches, but I don't have uh, the frequency with which I use her is not enough. I need to really start using her more. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear that and jump over to what we were talking about, the Rebellion Reward cards. And we can see here that all my commons sit about level 5, so let's go ahead and just do the combination. I know this is getting on Gathering the Magic's nerves uh, because he likes to level exactly to level. Uh, and it, for his purposes, I was watching a video of his earlier. Um, he likes to take them up, the cards up to a certain level, and then just stop leveling them for uh, some of, for specific purposes, right? Uh, whereas my goal is to just max out these cards as fast as possible because um, they're going to really be adding a lot of strength to my deck. Um, but I can see where he's coming from. Um, so as we can see, uh, let's see here, uh, Blackmore Wild Elf came up to six. Halloran Huntress came up to six. Nimble Duke Explorer, which I really like, came up to six. The rest of them are still at five. Okay, let's go to rares, do the same thing. Okay, so three, three. There's one that got up to four. Chaos Adjutant, Dark Arborist, and Janny Rebel. Now, the Dark Arborist uh, looks like a very interesting card, and it picks up 
uh, Magic Reflect at level three. So I've seen um, I've seen my Archmage bot use this several times already. Um, so some interesting cards, uh, level three and four. That's where I stand right now on rares, on epics. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have anything. Uh, this Kazi, um, Kazi Conjurer will level. The rest of these will not. I have really liked the Halfling Refugee. Um, but Olivia of the Brook, I consider probably the strongest of the batch. Uh, Arachne Weaver is also very strong. I like Night Reaper, especially in Earthquake matches. Um, but I think all these are good, strong cards. Uh, I was interested to find that, uh, once again, my um, Archmage bot started using Shock Trooper and uh, won several matches with it. So I was watching the matches to try to pick up on exactly how it was used because it does do one damage to your entire team. Um, but in certain cases, that one damage really doesn't amount to much. And he does more damage uh really quickly because he has speed right so okay so let's go ahead and combine those stop talking so much okay so about half and half level three and twos uh, coming along there and uh finally legendaries uh which i have very few of uh, I did get that Gallicus, uh, and I do now have a Surly Drunk, which is what I wanted. <laughs> this is the card that I previewed, uh, was allowed to preview uh, before they came out. Um, we'll just leave, uh, let's just go ahead and combine, uh, let's just leave it there. Uh, no reason to combine that right now. Another thing I want to talk about for a minute is uh, something that After Sound did a video on earlier, and then Gathering the Magic did a video on it. Um, so um, I'm not going to expound a lot on it because uh, After Sound did a great job. But the whole idea of this card set is now unlockable. And you can pay to unlock the cards, then you can turn around and sell it. And that's what's happening on the market. So for instance, um, let's, let's just look at uh, commons. Um, so I could uh, take one of the, I could take uh, a dry bone uh, hobgoblin and one BCX is five. So times that by 20, we've got a hundred. So it would take a hundred DEC to unlock uh, one BCX of dry bone hobgoblin or that, that applies to any of the commons, right? So the current going rate of DEC is 0.762 per thousand. Okay. So we would multiply that by or divide that by a thousand. We get that number and then uh, we've got 100 DEC. So we uh, multiply that by 100 and we got seven and a half cents, right? Seven point, um, seven point six cents. So let's just say eight cents, right? So then you come over here and you can see on the market that um, these people uh, basically paid eight cents to unlock this card and then are turning around and selling it for 14 and 15 cents and so forth. Um, so this is an interesting arbitrage uh, point, um, and it's, uh, uh, I don't think it's going to last long because the more of these that get dumped on the market, obviously we're in this time frame now where people are probably uh, rushing to um, uh, level up their more popular cards. Like I was interested, of course, in uh, Olivia of the Brook. Let's go ahead and go over to Epics and look at her. And she's at uh, $3.48 uh, per BCX. She's at 100 power times 20 is 2,000. Okay, so we got 2,000. 2,000 times the value of D current value of DEC is $1.52, almost $1.53. So in this case, uh, this is... Um, more than double uh, what they paid to unlock it, but the price is adjusted up because of the popularity of the card. So how long will this last? Uh, who knows? It depends upon the popularity of the card. It also depends upon how many of these cards are getting dumped on the market. As we know, once there's a saturation on the market, people stop buying them and more keep getting dumped on the market. Um, obviously, the prices are going to come down. I think there's there's a ceiling, though, or a ceiling. There's a floor. That's a better term. That's the proper term. There's a floor on it, though, because why would you pay to unlock a card and sell it for less than what you paid. 
unless you were just trying to dump out of an account or something like that. So I think the floor is going to be whatever it costs to unlock that card. Okay, uh, I'm not going to expound upon that a whole lot. We can talk about on live stream on Saturday if you want to stop by. I do a, a weekly live stream at 11.30 Eastern Time. For about an hour, we talk about all things Splinterlands as well as some other blockchain games and some other random games as well. Um, so uh, please stop by on YouTube uh, if you want to come on by. So with that said, um, it's time for the surprise. Let's check it out. Let's do an opening. And this time we are opening a beta pack. Without further ado, here we go. Just for something fun to do. I opened one on my live stream last week too. Okay. An epic and a rare. An epic and two rares. So this is above average uh, card pack. Common, Peaceful Giant, Minotaur Warrior. Rares, Peacebringer. I love Peacebringer. Peacebringer is one of my more favorite cards. Pit Ogre. Okay. Good solid draw here. And what's the epic? Air Elemental. You know, I don't think I have. I think this is my first beta Air Elemental. Well, there you have it, folks. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. This has been Bronze Dragon. Let me know what you think of uh, what I talked about in this episode. And I will see you in Splinterlands. Thank you.